So today I have Frank with me from G'day Frank, uh, his branding agency. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for letting me be here. So Frank, you're a branding expert and you help businesses of all shapes and sizes with their brand identity. How would you explain branding to the layperson? So I'd break branding down into three parts. The first part is how a customer perceives your business. So branding and a business, is, a brand and a business is one and the same. Let's look at it that way. Um, so how your customer has your gut, a gut feeling about your business. The second would be um, the brand, the way that you brand your business. So looking at your brand values, the, the customers that you're looking to engage with, the visual identity of how you outwardly portray yourself as a business through things like your logo. And then the act of branding is what I do is creating that stuff. So that's how I would define branding in a more, you know, compartmentalized way rather than a broad form definition. And from a creative perspective, mm. what um, elements go into the brand other than the logo? What, like you've got colors mm -hmm. and... Yeah, there's, there's, I think what most people would assume what a brand identity is, is that visual output of what someone would see on the day to day. Um, if you look at it more from an inward point of view as a business, you'd be looking at things like your values, what your position in the market is, who your customers are, and it, it really kind of overlays with what marketers do as well, and yourself, Mel, with, with marketing, that you there's that sort of intertwining of both things that you're looking to do, because at the end of the day, you're trying to figure out how to best connect with your consumer. And so branding is one of those opportunities that you have to really think about who it is you're trying to target and help or, or fill that gap in the market or whatever it is to be able to then create something that's that looks the part is memorable, recognisable, and um, gains that know, knowing, likeable, trustability. Trustability, if that's a word, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that you want people to, to relate to your business. So you can't just create a logo and hope it sticks. You, you, you want to look at more stuff that's inward of, of who you guys are, what you're about, what your unique and collective voice is to be able to make sense of so for your customer to make sense of what it is you are trying to convey. So Other you work very closely with like marketers, like and, and you do work with me, and um, with um, writers with the communication and, and the words. But but you're basically telling the visual story. I'll do the discovery through to the visual execution. So my process basically is to uh, run a discovery kind of strategy session with a client to understand what their business is, what their goals are, what their problems are, that gets down to the core of what, uh, why they need a logo, because it's probably not a logo that's gonna shift the needle for a business. Um, especially if they're an established business. They, if they come to you, it's, or they come to someone like myself and say, I need a new logo, it's probably not gonna do much for them. There's probably some underlying reason that needs to be done to rebrand their business in a way that makes sense to either resolve a problem or, or meet some new aspiration or goal that they have to, to change or evolve as a business. Um, that then translates into things like messaging, so looking at positioning statements, uh, core values, all that kind of stuff that would be uh, wording that you might find on your website or in your brochures and things like that. And then that will inform the visual side of things where you would do the logo and a responsive logo that works in many different contexts as well as colour and type. and all the other things that can come out of it as a deliverable, deliverable is what then makes, in my mind, an encompassing brand identity. Rather so you can't just jump into the visuals without doing the strategy? You could. I think if everything is cohesive from the way that you internally feel about your business and you out externally express it in any form of communication, be it verbally, visual or intangibly, I don't know what that might be, but it's, it's that feeling that you want to convey to somebody else that this is a business that gets you and um, it needs to be more than just a pretty picture on the wall. How often do you think you should refresh or rebrand? I'll take that in two parts because refreshing and rebranding I think are two different things. Refreshing every two to five years isn't a bad thing at all. I think if you were to look at it just from an example of your social media is to not look the same for that whole period because you could become stale, you could become outdated in the trends of what your customers are looking for and you could be, become very sedentary. Um, refreshing that look, changing up imagery, things like that can really boost it to make it look like you're on the ball, that look like you're actually doing something and you give a shit about your business, that you just want to invest that time to, to change things up and, and see and evaluate what 
people are looking for. Um, rebranding, on the other hand, is I think totally different. It's one of those things that I wouldn't suggest rebranding unless there's something wrong with your business um, or that you're really not proud to have the logo on your, your shirt or on the sign of your door and see it every day and go, you know what, I'm not into this at all. If there's something fundamentally wrong from a, a core standing of, of how you feel about your business or how your customers relate to your business, then that's something ex to explore. Um, I'd say in the real estate business, if you're under the big umbrella of an LJ hooker, that's probably not your decision to rebrand, but the way that you can communicate and the way that you can express your personality, that's something that could be looked at over time as you evolve um, as a business owner or you bring on new people in your team. What ingredients are required to create a great brand? First one is time. Um, I think greatness comes with time, with brand equity of, of people that can remember and recognise you, your business and your brand itself. Um, the other elements that are, I think are crucial is beyond the logo. The logo is one thing that's just that little mark that can create that memorability over time. But it's then what does that person feel about that business when they see that mark. That's what you want to grow over time. That's why I say time is such a great ingredient to create great branding. Um, the other parts are consistency, especially. I think you want to be a business that conveys your identity over every different touch point that you have in a consistent way. So if someone goes to your website, they see the same thing as they see on your Facebook page, on your newsletter, on your flyers, on your, you know, the front of your signage, your billboards in front of your homes if you're putting up you know, for auction signs, that kind of thing. If it, if it all melds, it makes sense to a customer. They're not confused by it either. Um, so I think that's what makes that, that greatness and, and makes a brand shine for somebody. And that's the challenge, especially if you're a big brand or you're an independent with a big team, then you've got the challenge that you've got these mini brands or mini teams and everybody's making use of the brand, uh, but they might not be following the brand rules and you have to kind of police, yeah. police what they're Keeping doing. Keeping everyone on the same. And when I say values, core values, what you have as a business, if you're employing someone to come onto your team, having them uh, align with those values can be a very difficult thing, but you will look at people that you feel align with those values to make the right decision of if they're right for this company or this business. And that's a big part of branding I think a lot of people would probably not consider. Um, and, and just having that interaction of being able to have your team say the same thing that the next person would say in your team and then what you would say so that way everyone has this unified voice that just makes sense and just has that cohesiveness. So it's really important then to bring your team on the journey or exactly. your staff yeah. um, and, and explain the reasons why you've, you've created the brand in this way. Exactly, and that's, which is exactly why in the discovery phase when I first have um, time with the business is I get the team that would be the core ones that would influence maybe the rest or um, the whole team if it's a small team to go let's get every voice here to make sense of if everyone's on the same page. If we're going through this process of, of having a unified goal at the end of it, it, it seems ridiculous if you don't have all those people, all those players that make up what it is. If you just have the C-suite, sure, but if you have just the CEO or the director of the company and that's it then you're really missing out on an opportunity to get a unified voice and everybody on the same page to understand what this process is and what the result is. And to get buy-in from the team exactly. as well, so yeah. that it actually is a success. Exactly, because if one falters, then the whole thing could potentially falter. If someone doesn't you know, want to get on, on board with it and isn't part of that process, then they, you know, you're not getting that unified message. How do you personally keep your, you know, your um, brands that you work on ahead of the curve? How do you make sure that when you're devising an identity for a business that um, it's not the same old, same old, and, um, and that they're gonna look you know, better than their competitors? I think the part that's gonna set apart yourself from the next guy, uh, either the next door or down the street or in the same suburb, is who you are. Um, I think it all comes back to that personal story, that, that expression of, who you want to convey yourself to that particular customer. Now, if you took your, a specific customer of demographic of your geographic area, or if they are a particular age range or um, certain interest, that's where you can use that to your advantage as a brand to 
make a better or stronger connection, that relatability to want them to be part of what it is you're doing. And that's where I think it comes down to things like content, where you have the opportunity to connect with an audience um, from your different branded touch points, be it social media or, or YouTube or a podcast or things like that, which can get at a different level than just being in salesy mode. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's one of those things where the brand is different to marketing and sales in the case that it's there for the long term, it's not there for the short term sale, it's trying to build rapport, build you know relationships and all that kind of stuff and that's what content can do if you do branded content well. Thank you so much, thank you for joining me again. Thanks for having me.